Well, Franklin has officially dropped their newest battery, the A Power S. And you know what? This feels like a direct shot at Tesla and their Powerwall 3. Franklin's been making waves for a while now, kind of the scrappy up and comer in the battery world. They started with the A Power, then refreshed it into the A Power 2, which, if we're being honest, was already punching above its weight compared to Tesla's Powerwall 2. Bigger capacity, higher power output, and it ran on lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And if you've been around the channel long enough, you know I've been saying for years, LFP is the way to go. Safer, more stable, longer lasting. It's like the difference between driving around with a Prius gas tank and carrying around a jerry can of rocket fuel. Now, Franklin's saying we're not just going to compete with Tesla, we're going hybrid. That's right, the new A Power S isn't just a battery, it's got the inverter built in. That means you can DC couple your solar directly to it, or rip out that old string inverter you had since the Obama administration and replace it with something future-proof. And in case you're wondering who Franklin even is, well, they're not just some random battery startup from a garage in Shenzhen. The company started back in 2019 in the Bay Area, and they actually named themselves after, you guessed, Benjamin Franklin, because who else? The man literally coined the word battery. That's like naming your new car company after Henry Ford. It just works. The original focus was AC coupled batteries. You could slap them onto any existing solar system and boom, you're in business. But now with the A Power S, they're playing in Tesla's sandbox. And let me be honest, they're following Tesla's blueprint pretty closely here. Same idea, different chemistry. The question is, can they out Tesla? Now I'll be real with you, I don't have official pricing yet. I called around, checked with distribution partners, even pinged Axia by Q-Cells, nothing. Franklin's keeping that under wraps. But if, you, if they're announcing it, it's coming soon. What I have heard is that they plan to build these here in the United States, which is a big win if you're into supporting American manufacturing. So for today's numbers, I'm going to cheat a little and use the A Power 2 pricing as the placeholder. It really shouldn't be too far off. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff. Capacity. Franklin's new A Power S gives you 15 kilowatt hours per unit. Tesla's Powerwall 3, 13.5. Doesn't sound like a huge deal, right? But that's a 10% bump, and it starts to matter when you stack these things up. And boy, does Franklin stack. Tesla's latest spec sheet quietly walked back what they initially promised. At first, it looked like you could scale Powerwall 3 up to 16 units, which would have been a ridiculous 216 kilowatt hours of storage. Enough to keep your whole cul-de-sac running Fortnite servers through an outage. But then, in fine print, Tesla cut it down to seven total. That's 94.5 kilowatt hours. Meanwhile, Franklin's saying, nah man, we're still gonna let you go big. And they'll let you stack up to 15 units for a whopping 225 kilowatt hours. That's neighborhood scale backup. Heck, maybe even small village backup. You could probably power Burning Man with that if you wanted to. Power output is another big one. Franklin lets you software adjust the rating depending on your panel size and utility requirements. They offer five kilowatts, 7.6, 9.6, or 11.5. Now Tesla does the same thing, just with slightly different numbers. 5.8 kilowatts, 7.6, 10, and 11.5. So they're basically neck and neck here, and both unlock full output in an outage. That means if the grid goes down, you're not stuck at that lower PCS rating. So you get the full power of the inverter. 
Now, it is worth noting that the Powerwall 3 does have a solar boost mode for off-grid use, and you can offer up to 15.4 kilowatts in an outage when combined with solar production during the day but it has to be enabled and specifically configured for that during the installation. Otherwise, you're capped at the 11.5 kilowatt output. So what about locked rotor amps? Well, both land at 185 amps. Translation, either one can crank up a five ton air conditioner from dead stop without breaking a sweat. That's huge. Nobody wants to spend 30 grand on a battery system that can't turn on their AC when it's 110 degrees outside and the utility grid just went down. But here's where Tesla edges out Franklin. Solar inputs. Franklin's new A Power S gives you four MPPTs. Tesla's Powerwall 3 has six. And yeah, that matters. If you've got a funky roof with panels spread out east, west, south, and then one lonely string on your patio cover, those extra inputs make your installer's life a lot easier. Tesla also supports parallel strings, which is perfect for older systems. Franklin hasn't confirmed that yet. Could be a software update down the road. Could be a hardware limitation. We'll see, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay informed for that. Now, when it comes to charging speed, Franklin takes the crown. Each A Power S can take in eight kilowatts of charging. Tesla's Powerwall 3, just five kilowatts. Unless, of course, you add an expansion battery, then it bumps up to eight kilowatts. Doesn't sound like much, but think of it like refueling a car. If Franklin's charging station fills up in under two hours, Tesla's takes closer to two and a half. Over a decade of cycling, that adds up. And warranties? This one's easy. Franklin's offering 15 years, Tesla's still at 10. Five years doesn't sound like a lot until you're the one sitting in year 12 with a Tesla battery that's technically out of coverage while your neighbor with Franklin is still under warranty. Now, Let's talk money. Using the A Power 2 as the guide, an 8.6 kilowatt solar setup with Franklin's battery runs you about 37,300. Tesla's Powerwall 3 version of the same setup, around 34,300. That's roughly a three grand gap. Keep in mind, this is an estimate and pricing can change depending on your specific project. So if you're interested in a custom quote for your home, be sure to reach out using the link down in the description below. But look at that, just an extra $3,000, what it can buy you. More storage, faster charging, way more scalability, and a longer warranty. That's not bad. If you're already spending mid 30,000s, what's three grand in the long run? That's like skipping Starbucks for what, five years? Okay, maybe not, but you get the point. It's not a crazy big gap. And Franklin's not done. They're working on a meter collar solution just like what Tesla already offers, which should cut down installation costs because right now you need the Franklin A gate and a sub panel, which means extra labor and relocating circuits. Not the end of the world, but it does add dollars. A meter collar would make installs a lot smoother and reduce costs. So here's where I leave it up to you. Does Tesla's name recognition and proven track record still win you over? Or do you give the underdog credit for showing up with more capacity, faster charging, and a longer warranty? Personally, I think this is the first time we've seen a battery that really makes Tesla kind of sweat. Let me know what you think in the comments. And hey, while you're down there, go ahead and hit like, hit subscribe, and share this video. It helps the channel out more than you know. 
I'm Dale with Renewable Innovations, and if you're thinking about solar plus storage for your home, head over to reinnovations.org to get a quote for free or to schedule a paid consultation. I can get you pricing on the Powerwall today, and when the Franklin A Power S is available, I can get you that as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.